Uh, I thought I'd start this very brief presentation by uh, a very even briefer history of applying genetics to livestock production. And let's just reflect on what we've learned after applying modern genetics, and by modern genetics I mean combining the pedigree and trait measurements to get estimated breeding values, EBVs, and then selecting on them. What we've learned is it's a very powerful science. In the dairy industry, milk production has more than doubled over 50 years as a result of selecting on EBVs. We've also learned it's a very bad idea to just select for a single trait. And the dairy industry is maybe the exemplar of this, where selecting for milk production for, say, 40 years led to a rapid decline in fertility because some of the genes involved in increasing milk production were the same genes that affected fertility but in an unfavourable direction. So it's very important that we balance what we're breeding for, balance our breeding objective. And the beef industry has actually been on the front foot in terms of the science of this for about 30, 20 or 30 years. And in southern Australia, the traits that have been recognised as important to breed for are growth, um, carcass traits, reproduction, more recently, intramuscular fat, and even more recently, traits like feed efficiency. And these are all incorporated into indices that try and balance up the emphasis on those traits to get maximum profit out of selecting the animals. And in um, southern Australia, you have indices like the breed plan heavy um, grain index. In northern Australia, um, the traits and the emphasis are a bit different. Uh, there's emphasis on growth, but also increasingly an emphasis on reproduction, as it's increasingly recognised that fertility is a key driver of profitability. And the breed plan JAPOX index um, recognises this and what tries to weight the traits to generate the most profit. Feed efficiency is going to become more important in the future as we get some measurements on that trait and you can start to think about meat quality in some situations where you're producing for a branded beef product, for example. But when you look at this list of traits, some of these traits are much easier to select for than others. Growth is an easy trait to select for. So the temptation is to select just for growth and to go hard for that trait. But that's the wrong direction to take, or it's a, not a great direction to take, because traits like fertility are so important. And fertility, as I've said, is a major contributor to profit. Feed efficiency is as well, though we have less data about that trait at the moment. But these traits, like fertility, are hard to breed for. You have to collect or collect a lot of data over many years um, before you have a handle on fertility. To get a good estimate of a bull's genetics for fertility, that bull has to have daughters that then get mated um, before you have a really good estimate of the value of that bull's genetics for fertility. There are some um, studs that do a really good um, job of this, Collins um, being an excellent example, and there are some others as well. But in general, these are hard traits to select for. And this is where genomics comes in. Uh, genomics offers the opportunity to bring into better balance these traits. And by better balance, I mean that in two ways. One is to get information on a young bull about the value of his genetics that you might have had no information about for a trait like fertility before. And you can also get the information at the same time. That's a little bit uh, unique. You can get information about growth very early. With the genomics, the potential is to get 
information about fertility very early in the bull's life as well. And if you can achieve this, then you can accurately identify the young bulls that carry the best genetics for fertility as well as the other traits and use them as early as possible to accelerate genetic gains. Now, I said there, if we can achieve this, what's actually required to get the, to this point where we have accurate genomic breeding values um, for fertility as well as for the other traits? And what's required is very large data sets where we have both the traits measured on the, the cows for their fertility, pregnancy, repeated pregnancy tests, ideally the number of cow, calves they have over their lifetime, as well as traits like age at puberty and so on. And we also need those cows to be run across DNA marker panels. So we have information on their DNA, on their genome, so we can put that together to get the genomic breeding values. This is already happening. Um, the Brahmin breed already has a genomic breeding value for days to calving, and that's terrific. What we would like, though, is to increase the accuracy of that genomic breeding value, and we would also like to have genomic breeding values for fertility and the other traits across all the breeds, crossbreds and composites used in the north. So how do we get there? As I said before, getting there requires putting together these very large um, data sets of animals where you have the traits very well recorded, fertility traits very well recorded, as well as having the DNA profiles, the DNA marker chips run. And it's only then that you can produce these accurate genomic breeding values for young bulls, for example, from taking a tail hair, extracting the DNA, running it across a DNA marker chip, and then getting back your genomic breeding value for fertility for that young bull. What's actually happening at the moment is there are ongoing projects to put together these very large data sets. Um, in some breeds, the beef information nucleus projects have been running to accumulate carcass data. For fertility, there's two projects uh, that are running, or at least two projects that are running at the moment. One on research stations and one on collaborator herds across the north. And I'll just go through both these projects. So the, the Reproonomics project is being run on three research stations across the north. It's being led by David Johnston from Agbu. And in that project, they're bringing, they're using industry sires, leading industry sires, uh, to breed heifers in the Brahmin, Droughtmaster, Santa Gertrudis breeds. Then they have the heifers at these research stations and they evaluate them for a number of years, five or six years, uh, for their fertility. So age of puberty um, and then successive rebreeds. All these animals are genotyped and this information will go in to genomic breeding values for fertility. The other project that's going on is the one Russell described briefly, which is the Northern Genomics Project. And the focus is on fertility, and the aim of this project is to come up with these genomic breeding values um, for fertility that work across breeds. So regardless of breed, you can get an accurate genomic breeding value for fertility, is the aim. And in this project, we're going to genotype 30,000 cows in collaborator herds across the north. And the north, uh, northern Australia, for MLA, I believe that's anything north of Brisbane. So it's a fairly big area. And it actually consists of lots of different environments. So we're trying to capture 
collaborator herds in these different environments or collect data from collaborator herds in these different environments. And the traits we're looking at are age at puberty as an early indicator of fertility. There's some work done showing that age at puberty is correlated with lifetime productivity of a cow, how many cows, calves she has over her lifetime. So this involves uh, ovarian scanning, which Shannon Landmark, who's in the audience, has scanned, I think, 8,000 heifers to see if they've cycled or not by 600 days is our current measure. The other, the other two traits are pregnant or not during the first lactation, so ability to get pregnant on that first rebreed, and temperament as well is another trait we're looking at. And the aim, again, is to get accurate EBVs, genomic breeding values for all these traits. So you can pull a, a tail hair on your animals, send that away, and get these accurate genomic breeding values back. OK, during this project, we're also, uh, I guess, investigating how EBVs are best uh, communicated or what resonates with people that would make them use EBVs more. So can they be uh, communicated in a, a different way that makes them resonate with more people, make the information potentially easier to use? Very briefly, um, this technology is moving really rapidly. The, on the lab side, it's actually being driven very, very hard by the human genetics community, so by the um, biomedical people. And we periodically look over the fence and borrow technology from them. And one bit of technology that's pretty exciting is the ability to sequence animals' genomes really, really quickly, so potentially within minutes. And this could lead to crush side genotyping. So imagine you've got your cattle in the race, you pull a tail hair uh, at one end of the race, stick it in to a machine, and this is the machine you might stick it in. This is actually a sequencer, DNA sequencer, that's the size of a USB stick, and it reads off the genome of the animals. And that means by the time the animal gets to the crush, you might have not only its genome sequence, but through your computer, have generated genomic breeding values for the animals. And then you could decide, this heifer's got really poor fertility, really poor genetics for fertility. She's less likely to get pregnant. We're going to cull her, whereas this other heifer, the prediction is she'll have lots of calves over her lifetime. We'll keep her. So that's pretty exciting. So just to finish up, um, it's really important to breed to balance up the different traits that contribute to profitability, including fertility. And genomic breeding values are really an opportunity to accelerate genetic gain. The industry's got a couple of challenges here. One is we need to collect these phenotypes, we need to collect these fertility phenotypes, and that's going to be an ongoing job. One thing we've learned in genomics all around the world, in Ireland as well, is you just need to keep collecting this data. So we need just to keep collecting really good fertility data to keep backing up our genomic predictions. The job's not over once we finish these projects. So that's absolutely critical. And there's exciting technologies on the horizon like crush side genotyping. And I'll leave it there. <laughs>